His job was something that did attract me to him because he was sort of this accomplished guy that knew uh, what he wanted out of life. After about six months of us dating, uh, we decided together that it would be best for me to move to New York City in order to take our relationship to the next level. It was a year and a half after we were dating that he decided to propose to me. And instantly, I said yes, was thrilled. And we began, you know, planning our future for our family. After our first son was born, I was very eager to get married. Um, but there was sort of this lurking problem that I never really understood. And I didn't find out until after three weeks of our first son being born that it was because he was, in fact, married and was still married, had been married. I never even knew he was married. He sort of started revealing how obsessed he was with me and how obsessed he was with other things in life, such as gambling. It was when he gambled away for the umpteenth time all of the money for the bills that I decided I had had enough. And I just came right out and said, you know, I want a divorce. We stayed together and uh, lived in the same home but in separate rooms for a matter of weeks before his first act of violence struck me. I left that night and uh, got my own place four days later. There was a, a number of days that Chris and I did not communicate at all. And finally, we got to a point where he had convinced me to go in and drop the charges against him and that we were going to be civil, that he was going to give me child support without a court order, that he was going to help me care for the children so that I could continue going to school and working full time. I came to his house after school. My kids were with their godmother and just sort of stopped in to get something to eat, get something to drink, do some homework, and go for a run. And it was when I came back that I ran into my next door neighbor and just sort of that chit chat, hey, how are you? How are the kids? Everything's great. And went to enter the home a second time. He's standing there, stark naked, with a butcher knife, and his body is shaped. And he just comes rushing at me. I turn for the door, and as I'm grabbing the doorknob, he's scooping me up from behind. And the butcher knife actually accidentally cuts me. So I begin to look down at the floor, and I see the blood dropping and hitting the floor. And this is when I say to myself, this is very real. What is going on, and how am I going to get out of this? He takes me immediately into the garage, and there is this blanket placed there, oddly yet strategically placed. And he puts me face down on the blanket and begins trying to sexually assault me from behind with a butcher knife to my throat. So he uh, switches to a hammer. He stands above me and strikes me in the head with a hammer two times on each side. And I can feel the blood running down the side of my face as I'm still laying there. And I'm like, this is it. And um, I remember looking back at the garage door, and it was unlocked. So I'm laying there, and I start saying my final prayers. God, just forgive me for my sins. Take care of my children. Let me go to heaven. And then something comes over me, which is the image of both of my children as teenagers alone without either one of us. And I, of course, as a mother, cannot stand that thought. So something changes in me. And he picks up this container, which I can't even recall what it was in, and just tosses gasoline on me. 
out of reaction, your body is that natural as it's coming at you. And I remember it hitting my hands. And I remember it going into my mouth and me swallowing it. And this is how I know that this is, in fact, gasoline, that this man that I once loved and swore he loved me is throwing on me. And I'm realizing that he doesn't want to just kill me. He wants to destroy the trophy wife that he chose. And I start praying to God, God, just let me live. Just let me live. That's all I want. Just let me live. And the look that Chris gives me before he tosses that candle at me is one of fina finality. And he just tosses it at me. And I instantly go up in flames. All I remember is the urgency to get out. So I run for the garage door and I lift it up like just enough to escape from underneath. And I can't even see, like I'm engulfed completely and I can't even see where I'm going. And I just drop immediately. But the problem is, is that every time I roll one way, I'm hitting the tree. And then when I roll the next way, I'm hitting the concrete. So it's not really helping. I can hear her screaming, Audrey, oh my God, oh my God. And she's running to me and starts hitting me with uh, her son's jacket and gets me out fairly quickly. And then Veronica is overcome by shock. This woman is screaming and trembling. And I'm screaming to her, Veronica, 911, 911. And she finally gets them on the phone. During the trial, he actually accused me of attacking him along with a masked man, that I had been the one that tried to murder him. It's like the ultimate disrespect. It's the slap, the final slap in the face. Something that I knew pretty early on is that Chris felt like he wasn't worthy of someone as beautiful as he perceived me to be. and. I think that he chose fire because he knew that if I survived, that he would have ruined me and no one else would want me.